This topic is going to divide many of us, but it is a subject that has been floating around in the ether for some time, and I find myself in a unique position to discuss it. The question of whether the mechanical watch, after all this time, is finally obsolete. And I guarantee you'll enjoy this, because I'm going to tackle the discussion a little differently. This subject has been on my mind ever since the smartwatch was unveiled. And now that they are continually growing in popularity, and years later, with sales greater than brands in the watch industry, it begs the question. So what does an industrial designer have to say about the subject? Surely I should praise the ingenuity, right? I love watches. And any industrial designer that tells you that they don't at least appreciate Apple are lying to you. I want to break this discussion up into two segments, the development of timekeeping and then art. So let's begin by looking at time itself. What is time? It is one constant that governs our lives. It is one of the most difficult properties of our cosmos to understand because, as we know, it is not consistent in other parts of the universe. And looking into subjects like general relativity, traveling at the speed of light, time as we know it would cease. But the fundamental that began the concept of time was that humans many years ago had the ability of tracking the sun. They could determine how long a day could last. They could determine seasons and how each quarter of the season would govern a year. And the most brilliant thing of all is that humans were able to create an object to measure it. The first innovations by the ancient Egyptians came in the form of sundials and shadow clocks. But the greatest innovation, and one that allowed us to be precise, was regulation. Having something constant to keep the method of tracking time uniformly was the greatest breakthrough in our understanding. The Egyptians created the water clock, and the Greeks pioneered the klepsidra, or water thief. It simply allowed one part of water to flow a small stream into another, and from it they could record a designated amount of time. This is where the term running out of time was first used. And we can see the principle used in the hourglass today. But at this time it was still a countdown timer, and not a clock. Again the term regulation needed to be thought through, allowing for a constant rate of water flow. A man by the name of Tetzibus used small reservoirs, and with a bit more ingenuity, allowed a drop of water to fall into a bucket at a constant rate that could be measured. From it came the creation of hydraulics, and the use of wheels and gears to improve the water's flow rate, allowing for more accurate time measurement, and the development of such innovations as annual calendars and chimes. The greatest development from this innovation during the time of ancient Greece was the creation of the Tower of the Winds, also known as the Horologion, a marble clock tower that uses Tetzibus's principles of water for regulation, and allowed for any member of the public to read it and tell the time of any given day. Humanity had finally stepped into the realm of understanding time regulation. Then, as we moved through the medieval period, the beginnings of mechanical clocks surfaced, Surprisingly, Catholic monks were the earliest medieval clockmakers, and with an understanding of the time could chime the bells of their monasteries for every hour of the day. This is an interesting point to highlight, that the practice of making the clock smaller became more and more prevalent. These mechanical clocks would be developed over the centuries, and we would see them on the corners of large buildings. Eventually they would be miniaturized and put in homes and entrance halls, then on mantelpieces, and finally a regulated pocket watch would be on your person and worn. Only in the early 20th century did we see the greatest development of wristwatches, and once again the technology managed to become smaller and smaller. Then the microchip was developed, and so the technology allowed for regulation unlike anything that had ever been seen before. Now batteries and a charge through a quartz crystal could be used instead of a mechanical component to regulate the watch movement. And nowadays the technology is so remarkable that a watch has the ability of being accurate to the second for years without being set. Then with the introduction of the smartwatch, it has become the most accurate wristwatch in the world because it is essentially an atomic clock. So the common trend from all of this is that as humans, our nature of understanding and developing technology to help us further with tracking timekeeping has been constant for millennia. It is not like it has been a new trend over the years. And now, with the way we see smartwatches, it begs the question as to what we will see next. With the development of timekeeping out of the way, let's now move to the next part of the discussion. Art. What is art? By definition, it is an expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. And the works that are produced are appreciated for how they communicate to us. Whether that is in their beauty or on an emotional level, we judge art by how we feel. Sure, analysis is important, and we can study the meaning of things, but like with wristwatches and anything that we covet, we make our decisions on it by the way we feel about it. 
Creativity is such a fascinating thing, and it is prevalent in all aspects of our lives. So when we think of art, we generally think of paintings, the works of masters like da Vinci, Michelangelo, Caravaggio, Monet, Picasso. But art is something that can be found in the smaller things as well, the art of creation. Whether you are building a house, writing a book, or cooking a fine meal, these are all forms of art to an extent. So is every aspect of creativity appreciated equally? Maybe not, but they all fall into the same category. What is one word that encapsulates art? I would say that the word romance best describes a lot of what we see. There is a reverence that it holds, and the artists from every era and every century tried their hardest to capture that romance in their own way. Of course it is subjective, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but on the outset, you look at something like a landscape painting by Constable or Turner and cannot help to marvel at it. Translating that to design, we look at these two watches, both of which are examples of art if we were to define it. They are expressions and applications of human creative skill. They are both beautiful in their own way and can both be respected and appreciated. But more than that, they are both examples of centuries of development towards an instrument that tells time. But there is a divide between them. One has been made through years of iteration and craftsmanship, built by experts who have dedicated their lives to the craft of mechanical timepieces, while the other has been drawn, developed, and for the most part, been assembled by machines. Now, I might be one of a few to see merit in both of these pieces, because industrial design is my field, and understanding how the Apple Watch is built is my job. But I also admire the art of wristwatches being built by hand through years of innovation and development, so it begs the question, do they both deserve to be appreciated equally? Though both of them have approached the art in a different way, can they be seen on the same playing field? The core element that really separates these two machines from each other is the word obsolescence. The word is thrown around a lot in the creative industry because nowadays everything needs to have a shelf life. It is a way a company makes a turnover. And there is no greater example of obsolescence than in the technology industry. If we look at the likes of mobile phones and computers, the way technology evolves by the decade is radical, and those that were once used are disposed of. For the most part, they become very expensive paperweights. And to counter that, looking at the watchmaking industry, there are still clocks and watches from the earliest centuries that run and perform as well as they ever did. And looking at wristwatches, vintage pieces are coveted influential pieces of design. Herein lies the thorn in the side of the smartwatch, and without going into too much detail, I'll leave you with a thought. Which would you rather have in 20 years? And which of the two would you covet more? Yes, the one costs the same as 10 of the other. But with all that said and done, the mechanical watch would not need a new operating system, a wall socket to charge every day or so, or a battery replacement. If anything, you could use the mechanical watch for over 20 years before it ever needed to be opened. Love it or hate it. The creation of the smartwatch is another step further through our long technological history. It is merely another blip on the scale of how humans have been able to harness the knowledge of our past. But with that in mind, we have to decide on whether it could ever stand up against the art that is watchmaking. Because we as humans crave things that are made with care. We crave reverence, the romance, and the passion. So is the mechanical wristwatch finally obsolete? Well, we could argue that wristwatches are obsolete, with the time found on our phones and on every street corner. They are anachronisms that we have held onto for many reasons, one of which being the sentimental nature that it has over us. But the mechanical wristwatch is far from being obsolete, and I will argue that they never truly will be, and will stand the test of time longer than their digital counterparts. When all is said and done, in our age of technology and noise, we are drawn to the simpler things to slow us down. And looking at something on your wrist that is so basic, with a few hands and a dial with indices, it keeps us in tune with our past, and is a comforting sight to say the least.